Hello, welcome to Z Marie Design. Let's upcycle a sweatshirt into a unique jacket. So to create this jacket, I'm going to use the four painted fabric panels that I painted from the video last week. And if you haven't seen that video from last week, I'll leave a link in the description on how you too can paint unique fabric to create this unique jacket. So this is one of the panels that I created. And for this jacket, you will need at least four panels. My panels measure one yard by approximately 22 to 24 inches wide. You'll need one panel for the front, one panel for the back, and one panel for each of your sleeves. And of course that depends on how large your sweatshirt is. You may be able to get two of your sweatshirt patterns onto one panel. So to, to begin, you'll need a sweatshirt that's at least two times larger than a sweatshirt size you normally wear. My sweatshirt is a 2X because I normally wear an XL. So to begin, we're going to turn our sweatshirt wrong side out because I want to be able to see those inside seams. You can see where the press fold is for the inside seams or you can see the seam itself. I'm going to straighten my sweatshirt out. Oftentimes sweatshirts come and they're not cut straight and they're not cut on grain. So this will give you that opportunity to be able to see if they are. So I'll begin by dismantling my sweatshirt and I'm gonna start by cutting off the lower band. There's no need to use your seam ripper on these seams because we have a sweatshirt that's two times larger. So I remove my lower band. You can keep this ribbing for a future project. I make sure now that my bottom hem of the top and the bottom are even. If not, I will cut them to make them even. So I just make sure that my underarms line up, my shoulder seams line up, and then I cut it if it's not even. Now my side seam is not where the press side seam is, so I'm going to cut on the, on the side seam from where I just straightened everything out. And you'll cut your side seam all the way up to your underarm and do that on both sides. Now you cut to separate your front from your back on the lower part of your sleeve. All right, so now we have our side seams cut up to the underarm. I want you to mark where your front of your sleeves so are, and you can mark it sure up from the know. side seam, make maybe about three inches from the underarm. And so you're just going to take your marking tool. I'm going to do a marker so you can see it, and make a mark so that there's a mark on both the sleeve and on the front panel. And that's so when we get ready to put them back together, you know where the, what, what sleeve is the front and what sleeve is the back. And then we'll transfer these marks again when we get ready to put the quilt in. So you have these marks, you'll know that this is the front part of the sleeve and not the back. So the next step then is to cut the sleeve. So now I want you to cut it um, on the inside of the of the sleeve, of where the panel is. So you're gonna cut, see how you have that seam? Cut right on the inside part of that seam. And that's where you're gonna cut, and that's why you made your line long enough so that when you cut it apart, you'll know. And we'll continue to cut along that seam and see what it turned inside out. I can clearly see it. And let me do this for both sleeves. And don't worry about this big part of the, of the sleeve just yet because we will take that off later. So see, when you come back, now you have this cut out, you would know what part was the back, which part was the front. Well, and then we now know that this is the front and this is my left sleeve and then this is my right sleeve. So set that to the side and do the same thing for this sleeve. The other sleeve. I have both of my sleeves removed 
Now I'm going to cut up that back seam to open up the sleeve. And just cut right along that seam allowance. Once I get down to the cuff, I will then cut off the cuff, the ribbing, from the sleeve. Now if you desire, you can definitely keep this cuff and you can cover it with fabric or you can just leave it just as it is. I just cut the cuff off. And now I know that that's my left front sleeve. Now I will proceed to cut open the right sleeve the same way. Both of my sleeves have been removed and both of my cuffs have been cut off. I'll set those aside for right now. And now I'm going to cut up the shoulder seam. And I cut right um, up to where the neckline ribbing is. I don't cut through that part just yet because I'm going to cut around it. As close to the stitching as possible. I've separated my back from my front. I'll continue to cut through the ribbing of the neckline. Now I have my, my front and my back. I'm going to now do a stay stitch on the neckline on both the front and the back. And my stay stitch line is about a 2.5 and that's just to keep it from stretching out. So I have my stay stitch line sewn on both my front and my back. I'm now going to take the front panel, I'm going to match up the shoulder seams, match up the underarms and the side seams. And if my side seams were not even at this point, once I match the underarm and the shoulder seams, I would trim it. I'm going to press to make a center crease, right down the center. And as I unfold, the, unfold it flat, this is the front panel, I can see that center crease line. I'm just going to mark it with my, with my marking tool. I'm just using a Sharpie so you can see it. You can use any marking tool that you like. Because next I'm going to come and sew a quarter inch seam allowance on both sides of that center seam. And once again, this is just to create a stay stitch because next we'll be cutting down that center seam. So sew your quarter, a quarter inch away from the center seam on both sides. Now I have that sewn. I'm going to cut up that center seam now, that center crease line. And that's just to keep it from stretching out when you sew that stay stitch. Now I have a left side panel and a right side panel. So now we're ready to start to assemble. And now I have my back and I have my, the wrong side of the sweatshirt laid is up. So you're going to put the wrong side of the sweatshirt. That's the part you're going to cover with your fabric. And I want it to lay down the wrong side of my fabric. And if you have fabric that has a certain print that you're trying to keep a certain image, of course you want to find the center seam because you want to center it. I'm just looking for color variations on mine. I'm going to start with my panel at the bottom and then I notice that my shoulder seams are, it's about maybe a half inch off. So I'm missing about a half inch from that shoulder panel. 
I'm going to maybe stitch another piece of fabric at the top so when I cut it out I don't lose that half inch from the shoulder seam. So now your panel, your fabric, whichever type of fabric you're using is laid out. I'm thinking of maybe using this fabric to cover that half inch that I'm missing there on the shoulder seam and maybe I'll use it for the placket and use it for the bottom uh, edge of my jacket or the binding. I'm not sure yet. It has the color combination that I, that's in my panel. I'll think on it for a minute. So I decided not to use that. I had enough fabric on the sides and I cut about a two inch strip on each side of this fabric panel that I had on each side. And then I sewed it together with a center seam there. Press the seam open and then I just pin that two inch there right at the top and I'm going to sew that and that'll give me what I need to cover that sh that part of the shoulder seam and I'll just incorporate that into the into the design of the jacket so I sewed that at the top I pressed the seam open and now I should have enough fabric that'll cover the entire back panel I'd rather have more than not enough so with wrong sides up on my back panel, I'm gonna lay my fabric wrong sides down so that the wrong sides are meeting and then I'll pin that in place. I didn't want the fuzzy side of the sweatshirt against my body as I create this jacket. I wanted it to be a nice clean finish. So the outside of the sweatshirt now becomes the inside of your jacket. So now I'll use this, the sweatshirt the back part panel of my sweatshirt as my pattern and I will now cut out from my fabric. And now you can clearly see the extra part that I needed there at that shoulder seam. So now my back panel has all been cut out. I still kept have my pins in it because I'm going to have to do the um, quilting to attach these two pieces together. You can see the part that I needed there for the shoulder seam. So now I'll take it to my sewing machine and I will do some quilting and now the right side of the sweatshirt has now become the wrong side of my jacket. So my back panel is all ready. Now I'll move on to my front panel. Again I have the wrong side of the sweatshirt onto the wrong side of my fabric. So just turn it in over. This is the right side of my fabric. And I'm going to pin this in place. And then I'll show you a little trick on how to cut out the other side of the panel. Especially, so keep in mind, if you have directional print, like I do since I have words on my fabric, I wanted to make sure that my words are right side up. So make sure that you pay attention if you have directional print fabric. Whether it's words or whether it's an image. And I'll turn it over and I will use my sweatshirt, the front part of the sweatshirt. I have missing just a little bit there on the shoulder, so it's not even a quarter of an inch. So I just kind of moved it down just a little bit to fit within the fabric. And then I'll cut it out. Now when you're cutting this out, there's no need to cut it out with a seam allowance because our sweatshirt, remember, is at least two times larger than what we normally wear. So just go ahead and use the sweatshirt as your pattern piece and you're just cutting it out right along the line. And 
So now I have one side of my sweatshirt cut. Now to cut the other side, especially if you have a fabric where you want to make sure the prints match, you're going to take the side that you just cut and you're going to lay it right side to right side and you're going to match that pattern just like I'm doing here. I'm matching my pattern and then once my pattern is matched, I'll pin it in place and cut it out. And then I will attach it to the other half of the sweatshirt after I have it cut out. So now I have both parts of my, the front panels of my sweatshirt cut out. One that has the sweatshirt attached and one that doesn't. So, but as you see, they, it matches. My prints match. And now I will attach that second panel to the wrong side of my sweatshirt. So now it's time to cut out the sleeves. Now to cut out the sleeves, I made sure to find the center part of the sleeve. I folded it in half, I found that center crease. And this is especially if you have a print or a pattern that you're trying to center. Fold your fabric in half, right sides facing, and on the fold, you're going to put the fold right in the center of your crease line and then unfold it and pin it in place. And that'll make sure that your pattern is centered on your sleeve. I'll pin it in place and then I'll turn it over so that I can use the sweatshirt as the pattern and cut it out. My sleeve is all cut out and I have my markings so that I know which is the right and which is the left. Now I'm trying it on just to see the length of it and it's it doesn't hit as, as long as I want it to so I'm going to create a cuff. I'm going to measure the bottom of the seam and to see how long it is and then I'm going to cut at least an inch longer than that and how wide I want it. I think mine measures 10 and, 10 and a half by 4. So I'm going to measure, I'm going to cut then it at 11 and a half by five because I want a half inch uh, by four and a half, 11 and a half by four and a half because I need it, need a half inch seam allowance. So now all my panels are all cut and they're all pinned to the sweatshirt, making sure that the wrong side of the sweatshirt is on the wrong side of the, the fabric. And I have my cuffs and I've Put some interfacing, lightweight interfacing on the um, on the back of those. I'll take these to my sewing machine and I'm going to do some free motion stitching. Now if you like, you could just do straight stitching. You can do it on the diagonal or you can do straight lines. Just make sure that you're using a walking foot if you're doing straight stitching. Or use your decorative stitching. So I did some free motion stitching on all of my panels. And you can see my free motion stitching there. I use my Bernina stitch regulator. I'm sewing on a Bernina 880 plus. But you can put on your quilting foot on any machine and do this exact same thing if you want to do free motion stitching. So I've quilted everything except the cuffs. That part I did not quilt. It's time to assemble our jacket. So to assemble our jacket, you see I have the back part of the jacket and the two front panels. So I'm going to lay the back part of my jacket right side up. I'll take my first panel 
and I'll fold it where right sides are facing. I'm going to match at the shoulder seam. I'm going to pin that in place. And I'm going to match it at the underarm seam just to make sure that everything is lying where it's supposed to. So I'm taking a half inch seam allowance. You can also take a quarter inch seam allowance. So once again, matching at the underarm on the other panel, right sides are facing and matching at the shoulder. And once you do a lot of quilting, depending on how dense you quilt your sweatshirt to your fabric, it's going to shrink just a bit. So you may want to take a quarter inch seam allowance versus a half inch so that your jacket is not too tight. So now that my shoulder seams have been sewn, you can now zigzag stitch this seam. You can take your pinking shears and you can use that and pink the shear, pink that edge. You can use a serger or you can cover it with your bias binding. I'm going to serge my edges because then I'm going to cut off part of that. If you're going to use your bias binding, I, I one of the suggestions that I would have is to maybe press that seam open and then just lay your binding down and just sew on both sides. So now that my shoulder seams have been sewn and they've been serged and they've been trimmed, it's time to move on to my attaching my sleeves. So now I've put a pin where my markings were, those two markings that you made. And I can still see um, the left and the right, that L and that R that I created. I can still see which, which sleeve is which, um, even under that. So find your center of your sleeve. I'm going to put a mark there, a pin there just to mark it. And I'll begin with right sides facing. And I'm going to start pinning at the shoulder seam. So the center of the sleeve matches your shoulder sleeve. Seam. And then you're going to go ahead and match the underarm. And then you're going to match at those markings that you made. So I pin where those markings were. And then once you have those four pins in place, you can then start easing your sleeve into the armhole and, and you can pin it. I use lots of pins because I don't want it to shift and I want to make sure that I don't have any puckers. So I have it all pinned in place and I'll do that same procedure. I'll do the same thing on the other sleeve. Now when I take it to the sewing machine, I'm going to sew with the sleeve side toward the feed dogs. And I'm also going to be using my walking foot so if you don't have a walking foot, you can engage your dual feed foot, but you just wanna make sure that that fabric is feeding in. And if you could go really slow, just to help prevent any puckers as you attach your sleeve. So you can see it really clearly. I'm going to start by pinning the center of the sleeve at the shoulder. Then I start with the end of the sleeve at the underarm on both sides. Then I pin that marking that I made earlier. And then I pin, I ease in the sleeve from there. So both of my sleeves are all pinned in and now I've sewn them in. And 
now I'm going to take a look just to make sure I don't have any puckers because if I do, this will be the time to take out that stitch and sew it in again. But I think everything is looking good on my sleeve. Yes, no puckers on the front and no puckers on the back. So now I will serge my edges and I'm going to, as I serge, I'm going to remove part of that bulk of that seam allowance. You can also use your pinking shears, cover it with your bias binding, or you can use a zigzag stitch. So now that my sleeves are in and they're all serged, it's time to sew up the side seam and sew up the sleeve. So now to do that, you're going to start by pinning it in place. I'm going to start pinning at the underarm first. I'm going to make sure that when I pin it, I'm going to press that seam allowance from the sleeve toward the bottom of the jacket. So it'll go toward the body. And I pin my seam allowance in place just to make sure that it, as I'm sewing, that it doesn't come up. That's just to help reduce that bulk under your arm and on your sleeve. And then you can pin on either side of that. I then match up my, my seams at my cuff, the raw edges at the cuff, at the wrist. If it's uneven, you can even it out at this time. And then I pin the sleeve. And then I match my bottom hem line there, with the raw edges. And we've already trimmed that up earlier. And then I continue to pin all the way up to the underarm. Now when I sew, I sew, I start sewing at the underarm and then I sew down to the bottom hem. I come back, I sew at the underarm and then I sew to the wrist. And that's just to help keep the fabric from shifting since we have so many layers. And again, using my walking foot and going really slow. And I'm taking a half inch seam allowance. I'm going to pin the other side the exact same way and sew. So now my side seams have been sewn and surged. You can turn your jacket right side out. And at this point, I'm going to try it on, make sure that everything is fitting the way I like. If not, I can make my adjustments if it's too big. My side seam is in, I don't have any puckers. My underarm is meeting where it's supposed to. And I check on both sides. Now at this point, your jacket is complete. You can use your bias binding and you can finish off all of your edges with your bias binding. I'm not going to do the bias binding. I'm going to continue the video and do a few more features on this jacket. So I try it here on Betsy and Betsy is fitting it perfectly. So I'm really loving how it's fitting on her. So we are going to continue on with some more features. Now, if you want to finish your jacket, go ahead and do your bias binding and your jacket is complete. You're gonna do your bias binding all the way down your center, around your bottom and at your wrist and around your neck. But I'm going to attach some cuffs. I'm gonna attach placket. I'm gonna attach a bottom placket at the bottom and I'm going to also attach a collar. So if you want to do a little bit extra, keep watching. So now we'll move on and I'm going to do the cuffs. So we measured the cuffs when everything was flat. We cut our rectangle for our cuffs and we attached our interfacing. 
Next, we're going to fold it in half, fold each of your cuffs so that your short ends meet. And you're going to pin in place your short ends and you're going to take it to your seam, to your sewing machine. And you're gonna sew a half inch seam allowance because that's what we cut it at. So if you're sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance, you would have taken this measurement at a quarter inch seam allowance. I took the half inch. So I'm gonna sew a half inch seam allowance. And now that I have sewn my half inch seam allowance on each of my cuffs, I've opened that seam and I've uh, pressed it flat. Now I'm just trying it on just to make sure that it's fitting over my hand. I mean, that would be horrible to get it on and it not be able to go on my hand. So next, I'm going to fold it in half so that wrong sides are meeting and that that back seam that you just took, that the seam is meeting. So fold it in half making sure to bring it all the way down so that your raw edges are meeting and that that back seam is aligned. I'm just going to put a pin at that back seam just so it doesn't shift. So now I have my cuff. I'll do that on both of them. And then again, I'm just double checking again the measurements. It's time to attach it to the sleeve. So now that your the back seam is going to line up with the with your underarm seam there of on the back of your sleeve. So you're going to slip slip your cuff onto your sleeve so that the folder side of the cuff is going inside. So it's facing up toward the toward your jacket and your raw edges are meeting. I hope that's making sense for you. Now you're going to match those seams, the seam on the cuff with the back seam on the sleeve. Pin that in place first. And then you'll continue to pin all the way around your cuff and the bottom of your sleeve. You've taken the right measurement so everything should fit nicely. And then you'll take it to the sewing machine and you took a half inch seam allowance. So I'm going to sew my half inch seam allowance. And I have both of my cuffs pinned on. I'm going to take it and sew it all the way around. Now that I've sewn all the way around my seam allowance, now this part when you're taking it to the machine, it probably won't fit under your free arm. So I'm going to put my presser foot right down um, on the inside part there. And I'm going to sew a little and turn, sew a little and turn, sew a little and turn. You see where my finger is? That's where your presser foot is. Until you get all the way around your cuff. And just take your time in doing this part. And then you can either serge that edge, you can zigzag it, or use your pinking shears. But once you turn your cuff out, you have a little bit more extension there on the sleeve and I think I gave myself an additional two inches on that sleeve. You can make this cuff as long as, or as wide as you want and depending on the width depends on the length of the sleeve. That will extend it for you. and it goes about to the middle of my hand. So just double checking that it goes over my hand again. And everything is fitting, yep, perfectly. All right, so now we're going to move on to attaching the collar and the placket. Now I'm going to put a placket because if you want to add buttons or if your jacket isn't closing the way you want, this is the great way for you to get some extension for it to close. So I'm going to measure from the top of the neckline all the way down to the bottom of the hem or the bottom edge of the jacket rather and I'm going to write that number down and I'm adding a half inch seam allowance on both ends so one inch total. And then I'm going to measure um, my neckline all the way from the center all the way around. Now I'm going to take this neck measurement several times just to make sure. So I'm going to cut my placket 
and I pieced my placket from the scraps that I had left from my fabric and I put some interfacing on it. So I think I cut it at six inches because I wanted my placket to be three inches on each side. So I gave myself a, at least six inches. Well, that's the part I cut for the collar. And I'm just kind of testing it out just to see how, how wide I want the collar to be. I'll eventually, I'll cut that collar down. You'll see later. So this is the one that I cut for my placket. And so I cut my placket at four inches because I want my placket to be two inches. So I'm going to give myself a half inch seam allowance on the top and on the bottom. And again, I just cut a strip and I put interfacing, lightweight interfacing. I'm gonna sew with a half inch seam allowance. And then I trimmed my the top of my placket, I trimmed it flush with the bottom and I trimmed it flush with the top of the neckline. Because then I decided that I'm going to cover it, both of those ends, one with the bottom placket and one with the collar. So I didn't need that extra half inch seam allowance. So I'm just kind of experimenting as I go. So I fold it back to make sure that it is flush there with my neckline and then I just trim it off. And then I sew a half inch seam allowance to attach it down the front center on both sides. Now that my placket has been sewn on, I'm going to press it over toward the, toward the inside of the jacket. And now I'm going to fold it, but I'm gonna only fold it in another half inch seam allowance because that's the seam allowance that I'm taking. And when I fold it in that half inch seam allowance, I'm going to bring that placket where it meets the seam allowance that I take that I took at the beginning. So that folded edge is going to meet the stitches that I already that I've already taken. So I sewed um, a half inch seam. I've sewed a half inch stitching there so I would know exactly where to fold it so that it's the it's even as I continue to go and fold it down. And I'm going to press it. So I don't know if you can see it there on camera, but I do have a stitch line right there at that fold. And my stitch line is a half inch from the raw edge. So I fold in that half inch and it's going to meet right at the seam that I took to attach the placket. And then I'm going to stitch that down. So I'm going to pin this in place. And now you can stitch in the ditch and catch this. But I'm going to stitch from the other side because I'm going to use a decorative stitch. I'm going to use a blanket stitch on this and I'm going to stitch it down with my decorative stitch. I think it'll just go tie in really well with the other quilting that I already have on the, on the jacket. And I will do that same thing on both sides of the placket. Now, of course, you can make this placket as wide or as thin as you like. Now, my placket has been attached. And I have my decorative stitch sewn down. So it just adds another decorative element. And I just zigzagged the top and I zigzagged the bottom. Initially, I wasn't going to bring the collar all the way out to the placket. I was going to bring it right to that edge. But as I continued to design my collar, 
I just decided to bring the collar all the way out to the edge of the placket. You'll see as I begin to measure for the, for the, uh, the collar. You'll see that later. So now if I put the jacket on and the plackets come over, that's where I could attach my buttons and my buttonholes for the closures for my jacket. So now I'm going to move on to my collar. And so I decided to uh, not have my collar as wide as before. I wanted it to be more of a mandarin collar so it'll be a little bit shorter. So I'm going to start to measure from the edge of the placket all the way around the neckline to the other edge of the placket. Now I did this measurement like three times and I came up with three different measurements. So initially I was going to take the average of the three. You see me writing it down. And I wrote it down three times, three different measurements. I decided to do something different. Because I want to make sure that this collar is fitting and I don't have any puckers. You'll see I'm measuring it again. This is the third time. Three measurements. And they're all different. So I decided I am going to just lay this down. And this is wider than the measurement that I took. I cut it longer than the measurement that I needed. And I cut it at four inches wide. So when I fold it over, I will have a two inch band. minus my half inch seam allowance, I'll have a one and a half inch band. So I'm going to start by pinning it right to the front of my placket, but I'm gonna make sure I have a half inch overhang. And then I'm gonna pin this all the way around my neckline. So I have a half inch overhang. And I measured my half inch and I marked it because I wanted to make sure that this is accurate. So pin it all the way around before you do any cutting and any sewing. Now, if you have a better way of doing this and measuring it, please leave the comments down below so that other people will be able to use that, use your technique if you know a different technique. So now I have the right measurement and I've cut it to the right length where I have a half inch overhang on each side. I folded it in half and I found the center. And I found the center of the back neckline of my jacket and I'm going to pin it in place. and I will continue pinning all the way around. Now if I find that it's off again, I will do some adjustments. But I pin that half inch seam allowance so that I have a half inch overhang from the placket. You see I have a half inch I hope you can see that and you can see understand what I'm saying. And now this technique that I'm going to show you of how to attach this collar, I was watching a video from Anastasia Sews and I got this technique of how to attach the collar from her jacket, her quilt jacket that she created and I really loved her technique so that's the one that I'm following and I'll leave a link in the description on her video and it turned out perfectly so you'll see in just a minute and I will always attach my collars this way from now on so at the other placket I'm going to do another half inch overhang and I have my half inch marked and then I will continue to ease in my neckline to my collar and pinning it in place
Now when I take it to the sewing machine to sew it, I'm going to sew it with the collar facing up and the jacket, the neckline of the jacket is going to be against my feed dogs because I want everything to feed in so it feeds properly. So now you see everything is pinned in place. Everything is measuring perfectly. I have my half inch overhang. So now I'm going to start sewing my neckline. I'm showing you now that I'm making sure that that seam allowance at my shoulder seams is going toward the inside, the in center of the jacket. So I pin that seam allowance in place to make sure it's going toward the center of the jacket and not toward the sleeve. So I'll sew that collar on. And I'll start right at the placket at my half inch mark, back stitching at the beginning and the end. So now my collar is all sewn on. I'm going to make sure I don't have any puckers. Make sure that I that it's sewn on perfectly there. If it's not, I'll take out my stitching. It's sewn on, no puckers. I'm going to press it up. No puckers. It's sewn on great. So now on my collar, I am going to fold it back. But before I do that, so that we can sew those short ends together, I'm, I folded in the bottom raw edge of the collar. I folded it in a half inch. I took a half inch stitch so that I know exactly where to fold it in and press it just like we did on the placket. And you're going to take that folded edge and it's going to meet right at your seam that you just took for the collar. So I folded it over and now I'm going to pin it in place so that that seam matches the seam that I just took and pin it in place at the short ends. And now when you take it to your sewing machine, you're going to sew that half inch seam allowance there of that overhang from the placket. You're going to sew that half inch. I hope this is making sense. And then we will get a clean edge right here. So I marked my half inch before I even take it to the sewing machine, just so I can make sure I'm doing a straight line. And this way, when we turn that collar out, we have a finished edge. So before I turn it out, I'm going to clip my corners and I'm going to trim to about a quarter inch seam allowance. I'll do that on both sides. And then I have my point turner. You can also use a chopstick. Don't use your scissors because you don't want to poke a hole. So you can use a chopstick. But now I'm going to turn that corner right sides out and push out the corner with my point turner. And we have a nice point and a clean edge along that collar edge. You can finish picking it out with a pin too if you want it to really get more fancy and detailed. Now you're going to push in that seam allowance from the placket push and from the collar where you've attached it and you have your folded edge pinning it in place. Your fold edge is going to go right up against your seam same way you did your placket and I'm going to again do that same decorative stitch a blanket stitch to attach my collar. And I'm just pressing it up. Making sure everything is nice and crisp before I pin it in place. Now it's all pinned in place. I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to do my decorative stitch. You can also do this by hand if you like. But I just thought that my decorative stitch will add right 
in line with the quilting I already have on there and with the decorative stitch I had on the placket. So we're almost done with this project. And now if you like, you can also top stitch all the way around and down the side of the collar just to make it stand up a little bit more. I think I'll do a straight stitch to top stitch. My collar is attached. I have no raw edges so showing and no raw edges on the inside of the jacket. So when you open even the inside of the jacket, it looks nice and clean. And my collar has the decorative stitch. And it stands up nicely because I did the top stitching. And you can see the decorative stitch set on the outside. Now the only thing that's left to do is attach your bottom band. So now I'm going to do the bottom band the exact same way I did the placket and the collar. I had to piece my bottom band together from my fabric scraps that I had left of this fabric and I was able to cut cut it about three inches. It's about all, all of the fabric that I had left. So I'm marking um, my short edge, a half inch seam allowance, and I'm going to do it the exact same way I did the collar to measure it around. I'm going to lay out that half inch seam allowance. I'm going to make sure that it is right at the edge of my placket, and then I'll pin it all the way around. And once I've pinned it all the way around, that'll give me a better sense of where I need to make my other half inch mark and to trim it down. So I define my, my pins were in, a, in my sewing room. So now I'm going to mark my half inch seam allowance on the other side of the band. I just didn't trust my measurements after I took three measurements for my neckline and got three different ones so I thought I'd just pin it down and this is the same thing I did to get the collar measurement so I mark a half inch seam allowance I'm taking it off because I want to attach some um, fusible interfacing just to give it a bit more body and I'm going to use the fabric scraps from my fusible interfacing also and I'm just fusing it onto the back of this bottom band now you can also use this bottom band as a way to extend the length of your jacket if it's not hitting you exactly where you want you can make this as wide as you want and just back it with some fusible interfacing or to give it a little bit more body like it's a sweatshirt fabric back it with some fusible fleece make my marking my half inch so now I'm going to sew my half inch stitch that I'm going to use to fold it up so I'll know exactly where to turn it and press in place And then I'll attach the raw edge to the bottom of the, the jacket. So I have my half inch stitch sewn so I'll know exactly where to fold up that half inch seam allowance. I press that in place the length of this bottom band. And I'm going to find the center. finger press it and put a pin there and then I'll find the center of the back of the jacket so I'm just matching up my pleats I'll match up my side seams and this helps me to locate the center 
of the back of the jacket. Do a finger press and then I'll put a pin there so I'll know where it is. So with right sides facing and the raw edges meeting, I'll start pinning at my center back and the center of the bottom band. Then I will match up that half inch seam allowance with the edge of the placket. Pin in place and I'll do that on both sides. And then I will just continue pinning the bottom band in place. Making sure that that seam allowance is going toward the center of the back ja of the jacket, the center panel. And then I'll go to the sewing machine. I'll sew a half inch seam allowance to sew this bottom band on. And again, just finishing to pin. And after you sew this on, you only have two steps left and you'll be done. So now my bottom band has been sewn on. I'm going to press it over. And I did a back stitch at the beginning of the end, right at that half inch mark there. So now I folded up my bottom band so that right sides are facing so we can do a finished seam on the short ends just the same way we did the placket and the same way we did the collar. So I'm going to pin and place at the short ends and I'm going to take my half inch seam allowance right at the edge there of the placket and I'll do that on both sides. And now to turn this right side out so we have a clean finish, I'm going to trim off that, that corner and trim up that seam to a quarter inch. Have my point turner there. So when I turn it right side out, I have a nice clean finish at the bottom band using my point turner to point to poke out the corners. Get a nice clean corner there. And then I fold that seam allowance down so that I can take that folded edge and meet it right where the seam is where I attached the bottom band and then I'll take it to the sewing machine and I'll sew again a decorative stitch you can choose to hand sew this or just do a top stitch and then I will also come back and top stitch the side and the bottom 
of the bottom band just to give it a bit more crisp, make it a bit more crisp on there. So I've sewn it on with my decorative stitch. And your jacket is all done. And this is what it looks like on Betsy. And this is the front part of the jacket. So this was an awesome jacket to make, especially with that unique fabric. This can be created to make it as unique as you are. And I hope you like this project. I hope you give it a try. All I have to do now is just attach my buttons or snap closure, whichever I choose to do. And I hope you like this project. I hope you give it a try. And thanks for watching.